What up guys, this is Organically Natural and look what we have today. We have some goldenrod. We just went foraging for some goldenrod today. Actually, that's not true. The first time we went was probably, I picked up some from my job, I wanna say on Tuesday. Yeah, cause I noticed it on Monday afternoon and I'm like, oh, that looked like a medicinal herb that I can get. So let me see what it is. And then it was. So then I was like, yes, I'm going to hold, um, do some more research and I'm going to come back and pick some up. So Tuesday morning before everyone got to work, I picked up some, showed some to my boss and that was that. Um, so basically what I'm going to be doing is cutting them and putting them on my dehydrating racks that I have here so that we can make some medicine out of them. Um... And then I decided, well, I don't want these from work because we do work in a highly populated area with fire trucks, police truck, cars, um, ambulance. Um, we have a lot of contracting trucks behind the building that I work at that does a lot of the tree trimming in the area. So I was like, yeah, I don't think I want that because there's a lot of chemicals from exhaust and cars and stuff. So let me figure out something different. And then I started thinking like, where else can I get these? And I remembered, see there's a bug on here, um, that by my daughter's school, sorry y'all, that's an ant, that I'll be able to pick up some from there. So I went and picked some up. Um, we went and picked some up the very next day or the same day, I don't remember. I think it was the same day. We um, parked at um, the police department, fire department over there by her school. And there's an actual walking trail. I may post a video so I can show you guys where we got them from. And then I forgot to do anything with them. So, of course, we ended up having to um, go back out today and get them. But I decided to let the other ones stay where they are outside. Because what I want to do is I actually want to utilize those to make seeds in my garden. So they grow wild in my garden as well. And I don't have to go foraging for them anymore because I can utilize what I have right here. I did notice we do have some in our neighborhood. Um, it's unfortunate though that it, it's not in my yard. <laughs> and I don't like people walking through my yard and tracing through my yard. So I refuse to do it to my neighbors because we have a lot of issues with these little middle school kids over here cutting through our yards throughout the day to go to school. And it's fine if they are respectful, but they're really not. Um, I had a little kid and his mom decided they were going to pull up on me. You know that song, I'm pulling up on you. Put some respect on my name. That's basically what they thought was going to happen. But anywho, so I'm going to keep going. Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut all of these little pieces off and get them on here. And I'm going to take the stems and the leaves and I'm going to dehydrate those separately so that I can do something different with those. All right. So my goal is, is I want to put these into, I'm going to infuse some honey with it. And I thought, thought long and hard on how to do that because originally I was just going to take the fresh flower and put it in there. But one of the things, look how beautiful that is. One of the things that I did read up on was the fact Bree, do me a favor yeah. can you plug in this so i can turn on the light yeah. come out of there sir don't lay down go lay down and go home don't pull too hard Bree. slide that over some no towards this way Bree. Yes. towards this I know, way it's not your cord is long enough that it's not going to unplug Ooh, that's too bright. Let me see. I don't know if that helped out anything at all. I'm sorry, guys. Let me see. I think that's good. Anywho, so I was going to just put these in there by themselves. Me, I mean, just raw like this until honey... But through some research, I realized that one of the things that can happen 
is that they um it smells so good guys that um it can liquefy like the herbs all herbs and natural plants raw plants have moisture in them and the water content will get into the honey and cause it to ferment and then it depends on how well you shake it up and pay attention to it and i know who i am and sometimes i slack um so i just decided that i'm going to dehydrate them and then i will add these to my honey and yes i know it would take a lot more of this to get the honey to um what do you call it to get this to infuse inside of the honey and i'm okay with that it's just me and my daughter honestly what we've picked up today will be enough to get us through i may be able to sell some of this stuff but of course i it will come with warnings that you we are not responsible for any reactions that you may have it is up to you to reach out to your health care provider and make sure that this is something that you can take um, again i'm not responsible for any allergies that you may have from these a lot of people confuse golden rods for um can you guys see me doing that yes for um ragweeds but they're not Mm -mm. so basically that's that so a little fun facts about these guys is they are great for inflammation so you can take these um like if you have arthritis or um those type of issues they're great for any type of kidney ailments i know a lot of people who have kidney stones take them um, these go this way in terms of helping out with kidney stones and things like that. Um, let's see what else you can use these for. They're a great diuretic. So let's say if you have high blood pressure, a lot of the reason that people have high blood pressure is due to salt intake and the body holding on to water. So these are diuretic is great for releasing the water out of your body. I took diuretics right after having my daughter because God knows when I came out of that hospital, I was full of water. My legs were so heavy and full of water, like lymphedema type heavy. Um, it took probably about three and a half weeks for all of that water to get out of my legs. I, it was hard to get up and get dressed in the daytime. But anywho, so I'm sure it will help with that. But I got this because it's great for cold and flu season. It's supposed to be really good with flu type weather. Um, I'm not doing anything special, guys, with these. I am just basically cutting them here. So if you want to see me just do the flowers, you can just cut those off and de-leaf these at a later time. I thought that I would only need two of these, but it looks like I may need a third one. And I'm going to throw these in the dehydrator. I've done some research and I have not been able to find anyone who are able to give me a detailed time on how long and what temperature to put these in. So my rule of thumb when I don't have that type of information is to put it at its lowest temperature, which I think mine goes down. I don't know. We'll see. To like 100. I think it goes way lower than that. So I'm going to set these guys off to the side because I'm still going to leave, take all of the leaves off of that. I don't want to overcrowd my rack because I do want to be able to pick these directly up from here and place these into a mason jar. And while these are dehydrating, I'm going to leave enough space that I can set a couple of uh, mason jars in there because I'm going to sanitize those. And that way, I can also... Um, I think that's all I should be able to get in here. Um, what do you call it? Dehydrate or remove the rest of the moisture out. But I'm going to stick this behind me here and get this next rack. Um, to take out the uh, whatever water that's left over from cleaning out the mason jars. 
So for those of you guys that says, oh, I don't want to see you deleting every single plant. So let's do this. We'll take them off this way. And then I'll go back and take the leaves off. And that way I can actually clean the leaves a little bit more. I don't really want to clean the flowers off. I've already thrashed these out on the porch to remove any of the small spiders that are on here and any other bugs that came onto the plant. Um, anything that's still remaining at this point will come off in the wash cycle, as they would say, in the dry cycle. Um, and you see, I'm just going to leave them like this so that I can utilize those just as they are inside of my teas and my honey. Um, it really isn't that big of a deal. This stuff will show up depending on the area in which you live. So if you live further up north somewhere, um, you're going to find these probably late, uh, late July, early August, September. Of course we're in the end of October and we have these you don't want to wait too much longer because once the flowers really start opening up you're just gonna get shake and everybody knows if you ever smoked marijuana I probably shouldn't be saying that but if you've ever smoked you know that the shake is not the best to have so that's what this gonna be the same thing with the medicinal part of it and I'm not a big smoker so for all of you guys who are like oh she smokes no I know she doesn't but I was just trying to make a reference to something that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, I'm cutting this off only because there's a lot of loose ones on here. So I'm super stoked about finding all of these. And whatever I don't use, I'm gonna put outside in the backyard over behind my fig tree because I want to be able to grow these in my own backyard so I don't have to go foraging in someone else's yard. Of course, it's not anybody's yard. It's a, um, it's a nature walk trail that we were able to go walk on, and it was perfect because we took the puppy to the vet this morning. So when he was done there, we were able to take him for another walk. Um to get some energy out because he got some vaccinations this morning. So of course, um, he's going to definitely need that downtime today to rest from getting that toxins in him is what I call them. Yeah, I know. Okay, so these are all of those. Y'all, this smells so good. So it smells like if you've ever had a Christmas tree, a live Christmas tree or a real Christmas tree that you cut down at a tree farm, that's what it smells like, but not as pungent. Um, I don't know. It's got like this earthy flavor. It's got like a pine. I don't know how to explain it. Like if you just smell it, smell it. It just smells like flowers. But if you... All right squeeze it you get the thing so we have two trays as of right now i am going to go sit these guys here i can just leave those here and stack them on top of each other let me go get a couple more trays As you guys saw, I just set that on top of that. It's going to be fine. I think I need two trays. Um, we're going to stay towards the end. And I'm just going to get these guys on there. And this is way more than what we need for a two-person household. But one thing that I've learned is that sometimes we end up having to share a lot of our herbs and natural remedies that we do have so i never just prepare for it just being me and my daughter that we are making medicines for 
Um, I try to do it where I know that if my family needs something and they're willing to try it, to give them some of this. Um, sometimes people can be a little iffy <laughs> about utilizing things straight out of earth. But hey, it's free. And if you've done the research on it, then you know what you're getting. Because a lot of people are like, oh, how do you know that that's not ragweeds? Because the leaves on the ragweeds are totally different than these. They're kind of like, if you've ever done gardening or if you've ever seen a fig tree, the leaves are so wide and they have different like sections to them. That's what um, ragweeds look like. And the leaves on these are kind of like rosemary, uh, olive leaves. There's a little skinny pointy leaves on the end. So there's a lot of factors um, that allow you to know which one you're getting before you even get to it. So, um, and you can, there's a lot of apps on your phones as well that you can do like plant identifiers. So you know what you're getting in that essence as well. Um, so it's not something that you should just be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's really not that serious. Um, and also when you do do your herbs, I always suggest that you start at a low dose uh, to make sure that you're not going to have a reaction to it because you can have a reaction to anything. And so just so that you're not harming yourself, I always say start at a smaller dose. So when I infuse this in some honey, I probably add like one ounce of the honey into a tea and see how that goes and i wouldn't try i would not do anything new in terms of herbs that week just so i can see if it's that um i would take it first thing in the morning so i can see how my body's going to handle it um i'm not going to go too far in all of the stuff for the golden rods because my job isn't to convince you to get anything my job is just to show you what we do here at our at our home our homestead because a lot of people say oh you have a homestead um, i really wouldn't call it that we live in a trailer park so it's kind of hard to build a homestead here we do have a lot of flower beds and raised beds here for our garden and that is what we utilize to do a lot of our medicines and foods here i am trying to switch over to a lot of garden growing so that I can <clears throat> get a lot of our trees and stuff in the ground, per se. But once we purchase a home, I'll be able to have a homestead. And I don't need anything big because what I've learned from here, if you plant right and you learn how to move things around, you really don't need anything big to grow. Like when I watch, you know who showed me that was Simple Living in Alaska. It's a wife and her husband, her husband and his wife, whichever way you want to say it. Um, they live out on a few amount of acres out in Alaska, but they only grow in a small area about the size that I grow in. And they are able to not only feed their family for the season, they're able to grow enough that they can can and keep food to feed them throughout the entire winter. And their winters are way longer than anything we have here in this parts of the state. So watching them allow me to see that it is possible. Whew. All right, guys, so that is all of the yellows. I'm gonna cut this little piece of green off of the bottom. And that is that. So I will show you all. I'm gonna come back and get these leaves up. Don't you worry. All right, so we have tray one. Tray two, tray three, and tray four. So I am going to go put these in the dehydrator at a lower setting. And when I come back, I'll let you know what's setting and I'll show you how I'm going to jar these up. I'm going to do one jar of honey and then I'm going to put the rest in a big mason jar. All right, guys, until I come back, see you in, in, in a few.